In this movie, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to some of the common features that you'll find in UML diagrams. I'll cover frames, which are used to contain diagrams, classifiers, which is a term used to cover quite a lot of UML elements that describe a set of objects of some sort, features and properties of elements in the model, comments or notes, and constraints, which are often shown as notes, dependencies, which are a kind of relationship, and stereotypes, which allow elements to be extended for a specific modelling purpose. Frames are used to contain diagrams. Here's a UML class diagram in Enterprise Architect. The frame is the box around it with a label at the top left. The label has the type of diagram in it, sometimes as an abbreviation, and the name of the diagram. Often, if you copy and paste diagrams from a modelling tool into Word or PowerPoint, or if you generate documentation, all the diagrams will be put in frames. It may be an option that you can control in your modelling tool. Classifier is one of those terms that has a special meaning in UML. When you produce a model in UML, the types of the things that you can put into that model are defined in a metamodel. Incidentally, the metamodel is itself defined in UML. So, things like class, component, interface are all classes in the metamodel or meta classes. If you're familiar with the object oriented concept of inheritance, they're all subclasses of the meta class classifier. You won't ever see a classifier in a diagram because it's an abstract class. But anything that classifies a set of instances of things in the domain is a classifier. The reason for mentioning it is that a lot of the subclasses of classifier have features in common that they share because they are subclasses of classifier. Classifiers have features and properties. These may be structural or behavioural. The ones that we'll use the most are attributes and operations. In the case of attributes, these define the slots that will hold values for the attributes, member variables, data members, or whatever term is used for the attributes of classes in the programming language used to develop the system. Instances have actual values in the slots defined by features and properties, and those values define the run state for a particular instance. In UML, you can annotate elements in a diagram or the diagram itself with notes, which are shown as a rectangle with the top right corner turned down. The term comment is used in the specification, but the term note symbol is also used for that shape rather than comment symbol, and most people just call them notes. If they're connected to a model element, they're joined with a dashed line. Constraints are often shown in a note symbol. Constraints define an aspect of a model element or elements that must be true. They're often expressed in object constraint language, which is another object management group standard, and are shown in curly brackets or braces. This diagram shows a note on the left and a constraint on the right, both applying to the class schedule. There are many kinds of relationships in UML, but one that's sometimes used where there isn't a specific relationship is the dependency. A dependency means that one element in a model is dependent on another. They're shown as an arrow with an open arrowhead and a dashed line. They may also be shown with a stereotype to indicate that they have a specific purpose. And a stereotype is applied to a model element to show that it is extending the meaning of that type of element for some specific purpose in a system or domain. Stereotypes are part of the mechanism by which UML itself can be extended for specific purposes, for example, to produce domain-specific languages. But within UML, they're used to extend the meaning of metaclasses for specific purposes. On the left of this diagram is a class, and then the three other elements are a signal, an interface, and an enumeration, all of which are based on the metaclass class, but have been extended to represent specific types of elements. The stereotype is shown in Guillemet, which are used as speech marks in French, and not to be confused with guillemots, which are a black and white seabird. As we start to produce models in the next chapter, you'll see these common features of UML in action in a number of places. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.